Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad you're with us today to stay curious with a special guest, Mr. Steve Jokum. Steve, welcome to the set here. Thank you so much, Mark. Happy as heck to be here. Well, and you're from where? Well, from Lake County, Illinois, town of Fox Lake. Uh, we started a uh, hobby-oriented business about 12 years ago when another gentleman who made really beautiful, very detailed modeling decals for the shuttle got desperately ill and couldn't do it anymore. What was his name? His name was Mr. Ed Bisconti. Okay, for and you he, modelers out there. Yeah, have... you may recognize that name. Yeah. He used to have a presence on Facebook, uh, eBay. And um, I, Ed got very ill. Well, we're going to hear about that company that you put together yes. here and see yes. some... It's called the Lake County Spaceport, right. and that's what you've been hearing us talk about this guy on Stay Curious for almost a year as you become a important financial contributor to us. We certainly are, appreciate your generosity there, but more important, like here at the American Space Museum, the fellowship and making friends of people. That's been and the you real were here for our Shuttle weekend. Fest three. Yes, sir. I personally am thrilled to make your acquaintance and. And uh, you're in trouble because I found a Formula One friend now that I can talk to every week Very about good. the greatest racing on the planet, right? There aren't many of us, so I like to meet as many as I can find. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> But uh, you, how did you enjoy Shuttle Fest, Steve? It was spectacular. I mean, everything about the event was essentially better than expected. Um, and I've said this to a number of folks who I now consider friends. I've met a lot of old friends that I've never met before and started to put some faces with names is the whole reason I was down here. Sales, connection, networking, that all comes from making connections with people. So it's always the people. People have to come first. That's right. Well, I appreciate the compliments there. Uh, we're going to show a few uh, we're going to show a few pictures of Shuttle Fest here in just a minute. We're going to reprise it all tomorrow and show you some great photography Good. by our friend Tom Usiak, who was on one of the presenters there. And I'll show you the panels here real quick in a minute. Um, but it's glad uh, uh, it's glad to meet the people that have gotten us along the way. And we being Marty Winkle, my co-producer. Hey, Marty, how you doing on that Usiak family microphone? Yeah, I'm doing fine, Mark. How about you and Steve? Never, Never better, McMurray. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'm still kind of catching up. I'll be honest with you, but uh, <laughs> aren't weekend. we all? We've uh, not only packed vehicles, but unpacked them. And yeah, uh, and uh, but uh, you know, we're kicking off another week. I'm not the type of guy that dwells on the past. We go looking forward there, and we are empowered to do this shuttle fest Absolutely. thing by people like you, Steve, enjoying it and supporting it. And we'll talk all about that tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, and Marty, but I come into my office studio here and I see on my whiteboard, somebody has snuck in here and written something up there. And as you pan around to show them that, we've got Cliff Watson from Pomona, Australia is gonna give you a wave there. Hey, Cliffy. There you go, Mark. I'm gonna yeah, it's as easy for me to do it than you, Marty, actually. <laughs> Cliffy, good to see you, buddy, there. You going, He's guys? been enjoying an American tour. What did you think about Shuttle Fest? There, hit the UCAC microphone so we can hear you. Um, How was Shuttle, Shuttle Fest for you, mate? mate? Um, the caliber and uh, the quality of uh, A, the, pres the presenters and what was there was just uh, fantastic. Um, Roger and Nancy's were well, well well done um yeah uh, the, yeah just the caliber of people yeah. Yeah. fantastic yeah, yeah. and there was uh, and there was some, some good adult beverages shared afterwards i know by you and a bunch of friends <laughs> there yes we uh, and one, one of these up here wrote on my board up here uh and it says uh, uh think about how wonderful chris Kelly is on monday up there. as i got my schedule of the week you're going to hear a story about the delta clipper uh, and, and April 24th, 24th by Kevin, Kevin Brown. You need to zoom in on it. And yeah. yeah. So anyway, anyway I'm going to go back to that. that. Oh, 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 that I really messed that up, Marty. You're, You're going to have to. There we go. Okay. Maybe lots of time for a while until he gets. We're going to show you this image off for the shuttle vest coin. But there he is. There's. What happened to. 
I thought I had another one in there. No, you just had one. Oh, there. Oh, I have two printed in there. I wonder what happened to that. All right, there's Chris and me. So I had another picture there of him talking into a microphone. But there's the great artist Chris Kelly, and I do mean great. He's uh, uh, fell off the tree from his dad's wonderful work, the great Paul Kelly. And thank you, uh, uh, brother. I hope you made it. I know he made it back safely there, so I'll be calling you later today. There's our Shuttle Fest shield that Tim Gagnon did that uh, you have generously uh, made an offer for Shuttle Fest. Why don't you tell people out there what you uh, got gotten permission, permission to do, do for us from Karen Conklin. Conklin. Well, as you may have noticed, um, I like patches. Yeah. I think for a lot of space fans, the patches are their way of connecting to individual missions. Each one tells a story, not just the names of the crew, but some of the background. And the artwork that Tim Gagnon has done on various patches that he's created is just nothing short of remarkable. He is a good artist, and I, I, I envy his work. But I asked him in an email after I spoke to him on Friday, is, is there plans for this to become an embroidered patch? Because he has a ton of embroidered patches out there. A number of them are for sale in one particular company in, in uh, North Carolina that does all the space patches. But I never saw this. I thought, why not? And Tim said, I did this for the museum. I gave it to them. It belongs to them. I'd support it, but it's inevitably their decision. So with Tim's concurrence and talking to Karen today, we're going to produce 500 of these patches. And five of them I'm going to keep for my own personal use. Five go to Tim for all his effort. He requested that. I think it's totally fair. So the other 480 are to become property of the American Space Museum Walk of Fame to... Uh, to sell its fundraising items in the gift shop at Shuttle Fest and let people connect with this whole thing a little well, bit closer. No, well, we thank you. 500 patches. We were asked about possibly doing patches. Tim and I talked about it. Uh, and uh, thank, thank you. That, that is a generous offer. Absolutely there. welcome. And, Glad uh, to do we, it. So they'll, we'll have patches for sale for Shuttle Fest. And uh, uh, so, Marty, you have, you're going for the microphone there. You got a question? Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit off our subject today, Mark, but uh, you may want to address it or not. Uh, give me one second. Um, comes from uh, Jamie Orange. He says, just wanted to see if you all watched the documentary on Columbia Shuttle, The Final Flight on CNN. Yeah, last night. Well, that's okay. I'll, for, I'll say first that no, and I don't watch those things. Just, I mean, I've, I've seen enough. Yeah. And, I did and, and, but it. I'm kind of in a, a, a unique situation that I know Mike Leinbach and yeah. and uh, some uh, who wrote the book Bringing Columbia Home with Jonathan Ward and yeah. uh, and I don't even know why it's appropriate to rehash it now quite I, frankly I, so yeah. it had no interest in me at all the timing but, was but, mystery but, to but, me but as those well. uh, people that uh, uh, you know I, I haven't even heard any opinion about it but that doesn't say anything about you personally asking the question there yeah. it's just uh i don't uh and we've always taken the high road on stay curious during nasa's dark week in january yeah. and celebrated the lives of our fallen heroes not rehash the why the what now we know the why yeah, human the details error, flat right out there. human error bad decisions in all three of the tragedies precisely so uh but uh but thanks for the question there did you watch it you said what, yes i did basically because opinion? i was in the area I, it was one of the thing, only things on TV that was moderately you know, in my interest range. And there wasn't anything new. There wasn't anything we didn't already know. There were some interesting aspects from some of the family members. Yeah, they went through hell. I mean, there's just no way of losing a loved one that makes it graceful. And we all felt that. I think everybody in America who was into the shuttle and into the space program Felt that right alongside them. And I know the people at NASA certainly did. So why are we kicking that can again? I guess yeah. was really the question I came away with. We'd rather you watch a show we had with the lessons learned, uh, uh, Chachi. Yes. Um, 
uh, did an excellent show. Mike Cinelli, yep. who's over the remains of all three vehicles, or two of the the, the, yep. the orbiters. In the uh, that's what we want to be talking about, is how are we learning the lessons learned from this and so forth like that. Precisely. So, uh, but yeah, it was puzzling to me why we had it now on there. So, well, thank you for the question, Marty. Of course, tell, let me know what was on people's minds today. Is is uh, and there's our Chris Kelly, and um, there's Chris with artwork uh, that he displayed at the Hyatt Place Hilton. I mean, the Hyatt, excuse me, the Hyatt Place of uh, Titusville, at the entrance to the Kennedy Space Center. Yeah. Uh, our good friend Dana Lavoisier and her staff was just excellent there. Uh, nice little hotel to stay in. Super. And uh, Chris, uh, uh, and by the way, uh, we didn't pay for any of the speakers. Chris paid for his own uh, way to and from uh, mm. Connecticut and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and almost broke even maybe on there. And this is by selling some of his stuff, but we're, this is where we're gonna take it to the next level with, with Shuttle Fest 4, yes, sir. is uh, make sure everybody's well taken care of. There was the scene at the beginning there. At one time we had about 75 people in, in the conference room there, uh, and it holds about almost 100. So uh, uh, we know that astronauts draw, and there is astronaut John David Bartow in the middle, next to Mikey Haddad on the left, who does a week, a, a monthly, Stay curious about shuttle payloads. He wrote a book on it, and Scott Vongen there. Uh, really, I'm I, I'm good friends with Mikey, and I, I can't wait to be better friends with Scott. He was almost an astronaut. He was a backup yeah, to the payload specialist Sam Durant's, wow. and uh, went through a lot of training that an astronaut does. And and there they had four or five as they had like five or six astro telescope missions sure. planned. Yeah. So he was gonna fly pretty close on one, to one of them yeah. and they canceled them all down to astro one and two yeah. so a tremendous uh, panel talking about the astro one and two and then we celebrated the, the life of sam durance and mike lounge and uh uh paris was another astro one three astronauts died that have been involved in this and then we got a great surprise when <clears throat> the one and only bob cabana <laughs> showed up and uh, I was tipped off by Mikey over in the right, and that's Luis Delgado, another level four engineer for NASA on the left. They talked about Cabana's piloting flight on Ulysses STS-41, and Mikey at midnight Friday texted me and said, don't tell anyone, but Bob's going to come and sit on the panel. Fantastic. And uh, so uh, uh, just a uh, anyone that's been around this man for five minutes knows... Uh, uh, he's he's got the charm of like uh, Mike McCulley. Okay, you can't not dislike the guy, exactly. and and they act so humble, and so that's why I wrote on his nameplate there just Bob astronaut, <laughs> and he got a kick out of that. Yes, Marty. Yeah, what you may want to mention, well, I'll mention it now, is this is our third event. This is the third time we've had surprises from astronauts showing up. That's right, Shuttle Fest three, and like I was telling my boss Karen Conklin today, the model works. We've we've we've, we've uh, connected with something that yep. appeals to the heartstrings of of space lovers. This is the shuttle era's time to shine. The next decade or two, Finally. just like Apollo. Well, you can do it with the Apollo era still, oh, you know, yeah. around. But but there's just a handful of Apollo astronauts alive, and only four yeah. of the twelve moonwalkers. And yeah. and here we've got a great leader of NASA. 12 years at Kennedy Space Center as its director, yeah. twice a pilot, twice a commander. And then uh, he was the number three man at Washington, D.C., behind mm -hmm. Nelson and Pam Bo, Pam uh, uh, Melroy. And he, she was third in command. He retired. And um, mm -hmm. I think Bob's about 72 years old, Marty. Uh, so, uh, but he was awesome what he shared, a couple personal stories. And then uh, we had our art panel there with... Uh, of course, uh, Chris Kelly, uh, that's Tim Gagnon. And a lot of people don't know about Ron Woods. Uh, he's an excellent watercolorist. And then Tommy Usiak, the photographer there, all had an interesting introspect of their own craft that, yep. that is, is what we want to bring to Shuttle Fest every year, have an art panel that Chris is going to just tell me what he's going to do with it every year. Excellent. Because 
Don't you feel art's important? Oh, to, it's a way for people to connect to it in a personal way. Because art says something that photographs sometimes don't. Well, you're involved in art. Modeling is art. Well, yes, it is. And I'm also kind of an amateur photographer, an well, amateur you're... astronomer. I'm into graphic arts, which is what lent itself to the whole creation of decals. Uh-huh. We're going to see, we're gonna see some great decals going on here. Uh, what's 75 mean? That means Bob Caban is 75. Aha. Uh -huh. That's his age. <laughs> That's what you asked for. Oh, okay. He's he looked up. All right. Yeah, he's a little, a little okay. older. Okay. I'm not 75 yet, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, no, good. Yeah, Bob Caban. Oh, he looks a good 75, just like you look a good 73, Marty. Yeah. Wearing it well. Yeah. He would. <laughs> I'm teased. Try, try I'll never be on. It's not the age, Marty. It's the Yes, knowledge. you had something else to say. Yeah, yeah Jamie Orange says, how can, we, uh, dang, how can we get one of these patches? Oh. A uh, shuttle fest well, patch. First, we got to get them. Well, first yeah. you got to come to shuttle fest. First, it's important to get yeah. them. Second, yeah, attend shuttle fest, and possibly maybe the museum will actually have them here at the gift shop in between shuttle fest, as long as supplies yeah. are available. Yeah, so we'll. Uh, well, I'm sure five hundred will have. We'll want to get them on there, but uh, we want it to be a souvenir of shuttle of the fest. event. Yeah, exactly. So I'm yeah. looking, but uh, thank you for wanting one of these beautiful. Uh, designs of Tim there. <laughs> um, and then we had the final panel of uh, Kevin Brown, uh, and uh, who's with uh, All Points in Space Prep. And, uh, you know, what Kevin had to say, people don't know all that's just going on. I know, on. it all happens in the background. Uh, stuff people uh, never get the chance to see. Uh, all Points is a company that's putting facilities at on Merritt Island, at mm -hmm. Kenny Space Center, because they don't have room. Like Kevin said, when these new space companies are coming to these pads and every pad of the old Rocket Row is yeah. now reserved by some space company at some it, point in time, it's happening. Uh, they, need, uh, they need some storage <clears throat> space. They need uh, some rooms for their, uh, their administrative staff. Yeah. They need some warehouses to keep supplies in, and it's not the there. Birds to get so them ready to all fly. points in space prep is building those type of facilities out there. Well, Bert there. Dick, another new fast friend of mine, he's the membership chairman for the uh, Ad Astra magazine of the National Space Society. Bert's going to be on our program once a month. Yep. And then Jason Dugan, there is a young engineer with Via Space, our hometown uh, rocket company here in Brevard County, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he uh, represents uh, uh, a generation from Kevin there, and he is uh, occupying a pad with Via Space that Kevin is providing, you know, some of the facilities for there. So uh, we'll detail a couple more photos next, and <clears throat> more about it, and some of our future plans. Well, we're revealed tomorrow. As my, we've had a couple of lessons learned meetings already on Monday after the Saturday event. Uh, we're so appreciative of all of you who are on fire about future shuttle fests. And again, to me, it's because of the fellowship you of you meeting, shaking the hand of Bob Seek. I mean, uh, I don't take that for granted. I keep saying, what about the guy in, in uh, uh, Fox Lake, Illinois, that doesn't get a chance to see Bob? Two or three times a month, like I, I certainly do. knew his name, you know, and and there you're talking to a true legend <laughs> of NASA there, there and a uh, humble guy like oh, like a lot of them. Wonderful there, so. man. Comment, Pleasure Marty. Yeah, comment from Tom Usiak. Uh, Steve, Tom wants me to tell you it was great to meet you, and I'll see you next year. Excellent. And there Tom you is go. home safely. Yeah. Roads being paved already. All right, Tommy. Glad you're home. I hope. Uh, he took the train down from uh, Pennsylvania. Great to meet you, Tom. And uh, uh, and uh, he, we'll see some of his talents on as he shares uh, the panels with some close-up pictures and stuff like that Great. tomorrow. So, well, let's get talking about this guy here and learn a little bit about modeling. We've got a beautiful green screen here of uh, obviously your workshop there. Yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, as you can see, this model behind you, wow. That looks like the real deal on some things. I've modeled this a few times, and it's hard to do those, the uh, the vents on the, the side of the bay doors that are so important for the, keeping the atmosphere inside the bay yep. up and down going in there. You got uh, the the rudders, the 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 stabilizing color stuff like that. You're going to show us how you do all this in a minute here. Yeah. But let's um, let me go to another setup slide here. That here's where you're from. 
tell us a little bit about that. Fox Lake is the... Uh, uh, yeah, we're way north in Illinois, Mark. Um, you are. Oh, here we go. Marty's yeah. got the arrow out. Yeah. yeah, if you go up to Waukegan, Illinois, Mark, or yeah. Marty, uh, which is the... Uh, then those lakes to the left of Waukegan. You're right there. You're right there. Yeah, there, there you go. Yep, keep and going far if, left. If you literally go left... Down, down a little bit. Right there, you're at it. Back away just to your right. Isn't that it? Right in there. Your Actually, it, I thought we were further over, but the map could be confusing me just a little bit. Uh, anyway. We north are, of Chicago. Uh, way north of Chicago. Uh, much closer to Wisconsin than Chicago. Okay. We're very north in Lake County on what's called the Chain of Lakes, and Fox Lake is one of those. Uh, it's the town we moved to while I was still working for Underwriters Laboratories. It finished a 27-year career with them. Now, is this where you grew up? Uh, you... No, actually, I grew up in a little bitty town in central Illinois near Peoria called Roanoke, Illinois. Okay. And that's that's where this whole nonsense started. Yeah. Because as a kid going to school, I got, you know, the weekly reader and all the stuff oh, you the get when you're in, in, in grade school. And there's pictures of this cat named Alan Shepard in this silver spacesuit. They're going to put this guy in the, what appears to be the nose cone of a rocket, and he's going where? Holy cow. This is adventure. This is serious stuff. So, yeah, it captivated my interest. Um, and that just kept, you know, building and building and building. Some days it was in the background. Some days it wasn't the most important thing in your life. And in high school, that was pretty painfully obvious. But the older I got, the more I started pulling back toward things that mattered. And I grew, I tell people, I grew up with Apollo and I grew old with the shuttle. <laughs> because okay. the shuttle and I have been on speaking and knowing terms in print form and reading and researching since about 1974 when NASA first started flinging paraphernalia out to people who were interested about the program. And it's evolved a lot, obviously. But modeling was a way of self-expression, of feeling connected to the program, to the machinery, to the real thing that was happening. And back then, it included model rocketry where we were actually putting birds into the air. That's really a big part of the genesis. And our logo comes from the original pet logo for, um, yeah, thank you, for the Illinois Valley Aerospace Club that a bunch of us space geeks founded in, high, in grade school and then through high school. We stayed with it. And we even did some demonstration launches for the old Estes Industries and some of the park districts around Chicago to get kids interested in model rocketry. And, of course, then they learn about mathematics. They learn about systems integration, electronics, because of the launch controllers. Model rocketry embraces a ton of different stuff that directly applies to real space flight, but at a personal level, at a personal scale. But that's what started this whole thing. It just kept building. And somewhere along the line, I started making scale models of the shuttle because it mattered. And especially after attending STS-1, the very first launch in April of 1981. Forty-three years ago, you were there, huh? It scarred me Just landed life. yesterday, 43 yes, years ago. Yeah, well, I've been up here since, uh, down here, since yeah. the 12th. And I spent the 12th at Kennedy, of course, yeah. as you do. But, uh, yeah, the patch is, of course, a remembrance of that first flight. I got back home, and I had to basically build. It was like, you know, <laughs> being struck by lightning. You had to do something to codify this this feeling you got. And so building a better model of the shuttle was what started this. Along the way, <clears throat> I got connected with some neat decals that a gentleman near Chicago made, Ed Biscotti. And oh, so they, Ed Biscotti was a Chicago native. Oh, uh, yeah. He was the guy that originally bought these decals from. Uh -huh. The ones that are on the underside of the orbiter. And we're going to see those. Yeah, here we're going to show some couple slides. Of shots. You can talk yeah. about the details. And that's where that started. Ed got very sick and couldn't make the business work for him anymore. He had to leave eBay because he was, he had cancer. Mm -hmm. It was a bad, bad situation. But there were other modelers besides myself beating the bushes to try to find copies of these decals because like me they were in the middle of a project so i had a set of a smaller scale 1144 one inch equals 12 feet 
the model I'm working on is now 172. One inch equals six feet. Much bigger model. Twice the size. Oh, okay. What happens if we scan the 1144s digitally, blow them up, and print them? Ed did it in his house. Maybe I can do it. And 12 years later, the rest, <laughs> yeah, you're, as the they rest say, is history. history. Well, and, let's uh, uh, let's yeah. get into some detail of sure. modeling here. So those yeah. of you who don't model, you're going to learn a little bit about the craft. I am a poor modeler. I've always loved just putting stuff together, but I don't have the patience and yeah. tenacity to make them look uh, uh That's where th our stuff that is made to help you. you know? yeah, yeah, right. But I understand uh, about the decals he's talking about to enhance and make your models. That's right. If you can glue neatly some of the pieces together you don't have to do a whole lot of painting because these models so uh let's uh you just tell me when to okay. go forward here oh, that's there, a there's, good our, there's our script i, I right. kept them in the order that you okay you had them there well so, and uh, i kind of sorted through these at home and they're maybe not in the order we just talked about but it'll still work uh ravel offers a model of the iss here national space station okay. and it's a decent model but it doesn't have a lot of detail I started looking through NASA photographs of the, the complex, pulling some of the graphics and organizing a set of decals that could be added to the ISS model to make it look more authentic, make it look more realistic. Solar panels or something. The solar panels paint. on That's this indeed. particular Soyuz is from our, our collections, from our set. So are all the nameplates on the Soyuz uh, orbital module, on the, um, I think that's the Rosvian. Hmm? Oh, okay. Well, um, it's one of the secondary modules. Svesta is the big one point. up there on yeah. top, uh, uh, and this is one of the smaller docking modules. Okay. Question: <clears throat> These, de when we say decal, yes. as a as a baby boomer from the '60s, yeah, I'm thinking of the water decals. Mm -hmm. Are these water decals or are they adhesive back decals? The ISS set comes both ways, so mostly okay. because when I started doing it. The only thing with a white background I had access to was self-adhesive label stock. So that's where it started. It's now gone to a much higher quality photo grade self-adhesive paper. So I can get photograph quality prints just like the decal paper, but it's still self-adhesive. Okay. Very easy to use. Well, that makes it good because those of you who don't know about modeling, what I'm talking about is you take the model sheet, put it in water so mm -hmm. it lifts itself from the paper yeah. and while it's still wet it Loose. is sticky yeah. and then you mess it and of course you're going to tear it a couple times and we you're use a pretty it. robust stock you so, have to uh, work to uh, tear it well, i'm talking Wrinkle, about the yes. old days i'm tear, talking about oh. the old days doing my yeah uh, oh they always rip yeah, you know yeah. that that was a pain of that yeah. all right so well, yes the iss is one of the few situations where we swing both ways and yeah. people can order either the paper back uh, adhesive back paper or the decal set depending on their inclination as a now model. that all that silver is a, a wrapping well that's what i did to my model and i include instructions with our application set i call it to show other people how to do it too that's silver aluminum duct tape oh okay like you get in the hardware store all right and if you apply it to the outside shell of those modules and buff it nice and smooth it looks there quite respectable. And then we put our, you know, decals for the Japanese flag on the Kibo module and the the, uh, the Columbus over there. Now, here's the solar arrays. These are first-generation paper applications, and you know it's kind of a dull finish. The new ones are not dull. They're gloss finish, and they look exactly like the decals. Hmm. But you can do these in self-adhesive paper. Now, this is our current version of the underside TPS decals for the orbiter. And if you look at those very carefully and you go out to Kennedy and look at the bottom of Atlantis, you're going to see these are in exactly the same layout pattern as the tiles on no the way. orbiter. No way. Yes, I'm going to go look at that because well, I know the do. dark ones are the, are the ones they replace. Well, and Ed did that to create kind of a randomized look to it. Uh -huh. Because now this is on a white well, background. No, that that looked great. Yeah, that looked great on any uh, Now shuttle. you can also put this on a slightly darker background, and make them look newer. Okay. But if you put them on a white background like this, they look a little more shop worn, okay. like they've been flown a couple. Because there's times. no way you can paint or do anything to make that look right. Well, and uh, let's, like that, let me just interject here. There, I I heard of a modeler in Germany. 
on e on on the internet on the social media who was actually cutting out little squares of styrene plastic really and applying them to the underside of his model <laughs> okay. he was putting tiles on his model the same way they did it at kennedy yeah i don't have that tolerance of patience i just don't no. uh and this ed's decals originally had the underside the nose sheens and just the perimeter of the wings and some white tiles to go around the forward fuselage and the cockpit. But that's all. Huh. That's all the decal space he did. Our sets are now modular. The black tiles, that's every orbiter you built. They all use the same basic underside black tile treatments. But the top of the orbiters are different. Early ones like Columbia and Challenger, they use tiles. Later models like Atlantis, Discovery, Endeavor, their dominance is the blankets, the flexible advanced, yeah. flexible re re reusable we'll surface some, insulation. We'll, yeah, we'll the acronym will kill you. But here on this model, particularly on your background, that was a 1 100 scale Tamiya that I did in Atlantis mode in, 1 -1, yeah, in right. 135, the, the last mission. And you can see our late era. Apple, uh, decal set used on that model. That's and the OM was... pods with the blankets there. Exactly. Yeah, we're trying right. to replicate the way the <laughs> orbiter looks no, to give it the graphic detail. Yeah. Now this is Columbia. This is also a one one hundred scale Tamiya, but you can see the tiles Tamiya, laid into the wings. The, the model company. Yeah, Japanese company. Okay. The only one that makes a one one hundred scale. Yeah, I never Everybody heard of else, that scale. Yeah, they, they like it for some reason. One They've used it. Seventy second one one four four. Bingo. Is the... Those are the two yeah. dominant scales for most aviation models. So this companies. is a size in between that. That's yep. kind of a nice size. Good for shelf space, let me yeah. tell you. Because yeah. yeah. 172 orbiters start taking up a life of their own. Yeah. Now look at how the patina looks good there. I mean, yep. it looks like this is a flown orbiter. You, it looks a little dirty in spots. It's still and, pretty new. I'm, I'm uh, pleased with the way these decals and, turned out. And, uh, of course, uh, those of you that follow... Uh, stay curious, and Terry White, our expert in the Hi, our, our shuttle garage uh, uh, mechanic there. He's yep. part of the pit crew. Yes, for he the, is. Was. Uh, we know this is Columbia because of a decal you have on there. Explain that. Yeah, you can see the dark wing sheen coming down along the fuselage mm -hmm. from the forward part right down to where the wing begins to bend. Whoops. This, this part right here. Yeah, that part that right part there. Right there is not on any other shuttle. Nope. They that was thought, an extra. Yeah, they really yeah. thought that the heat flow coming around the wing edge there would cause more problems than it ended up doing. And so, yeah, you can see in the later pictures, like the one with Atlantis, that that So you black ordered that's a Columbia kit or the Columbia. And, yeah, and the decal is marked specifically for Columbia. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> There's also another version, which so is nice used thing. on uh, Challenger, which is slightly different than what was used on the later orbiters. Now, this is that Atlantis build model again, before I put the doors on, and it shows some of the wing spar decals that we have, and people can use them if they want, not use them if they don't. Many of the decals are a matter of, of modeler preferences. We supply the parts. People can use them as they see fit. But notice that there's still tiles around the cockpit window. Yeah. And on the front of the ohms pots. And because is that a decal on the bottom? Is that is that a decal that said the payload bay liner on the uh -huh. bottom? Aha. That's the reason I have this photo in there. That is our payload bay interior surface application set, and it's the second only version of our what we sell that you can get in photo quality, self-adhesive paper, or as a water slide decal. Uh -huh. Different modelers have different tastes on how they want to build. So after filling a couple orders for people, I decided to heck with it. We'll produce them both and let folks choose what they want. Uh, but the payload bay, yes, is designed to make the surfaces look like the blanket coverings that Jean Wright and her so sisters did to cover the uh, spars of the payload bay. The forward and aft bulkheads have the blankets on them and some graphics. So, you know, this is more except for the payload bay doors being absent, a complete build. Because you, we've got the MPLM in the back, the express logistics module back there that we've added embellishments to, and the uh, docking adapter, the picture of the docking hatch in the center is a picture. It's an application that I got from a NASA photograph, shrunk it to size, 
and you pop it right in there. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Here's and there she is with the there. doors on, doors shut, like she might have been for entry or launch. Right. That's the same kit. That's the one one hundred scale. Now, for a long time, nobody else in the modeling industry was going to do better engines in one one hundred because to me is the only company making that kit. They do one forty four. They do one seven twos because everybody's buying kits in those scales, like you said. But nobody was doing one one hundred, and it's a great model. So I decided to start 3D printing one 100 scale SSMEs. I got the 3D model for it. I own two 3D printers. One's resin, one's FDM. What's These are mean? resins. Or well, the FDM. resin is where you got the little vat of liquid plastic, and the build plate goes down into it, and an LCD underneath with UV illumination scans essentially that layer and hardens that layer of plastic about a half a millimeter thick plate comes up to debond goes back down next layer up down next layer and that's what you end up with you just build the engines 1.05 millimeter layer at a time and we can do six engines per print now uh -huh. which speeds up the process a little bit because when you're doing six of these it takes about three and a half hours to print them huh. interesting and, and the marty next... you worked on the ssmes there they are yeah exactly how accurate this today. is old home week for marty yeah now there they are painted you might want to blow that up that's where i painted them to look more like the engines that are currently on atlantis out at the uh atlantis building at the just talk about painting there for a second there uh, uh there are all kinds of model shops go out there and enjoy them. Uh, there aren't specific paints for spacecraft, no. I, I, but there are specific paints for the military things. So some of the so so ironically, I've, some I, of the same colors. I, yeah, I've, I've used military paint, sure. for, which is more prevalent with the airplanes and tanks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. There's a ton of products that are. Or, or match the colors of oh, green, yeah. so I got, yeah. and and I've I've used those on a couple model projects. Oh, yeah. that would and the same thing applies here. You're going to there's find... no line of shuttle match no. paints. No, it's basically using existing available materials closest to the correct color. Okay, are so you a spray natural. painter or a brush painter? Well, the engines at one one hundred are actually both. I, there's a fundamental light gray color that was airbrushed on. And then the darker gray, almost a silver slate gray, and you won't be able to blow that up any bigger because I know it's too yeah, tall. Yeah. Those are painted on by hand because they have to be. Okay. All you right. know, all that plumbing is kind of sticking out away from the surface of the engine. So you have to take your brush and just graze the surface hmm. to get the color to lay down. It all matters to modelers making their... Their art, uh, this is a piece of art, right? Well, it's the way they as really much as look, Chris Mark. Cowley's is. That's, really. the, that's the way it's supposed to that's be. That's right. That's the difference between a scale model and a toy. All right. Well, here looks like a fun toy. That could be uh, uh, Mr. Stewart or Mr. McCandless there. It's actually a model well, after Bruce McCandless. Well, he's got the red on there. I was just going to yep. say, okay, he's got the red stripe, so that has to be And I don't Bruce. know if I included a, a front view, but if I did, and I don't recall, no. Um, there you would see the STS, what was it, 51, what mission? D was or that? something. Yeah, it was, it was the first MMU flight. And yeah, that got my attention. What wouldn't be about that flight get your attention? Well, this you know, Buck I've Rogers got the shuttle had. scroll nearby here. All right, to, good. I'm to, glad to, you did. Because to, to I just reached there. another one of my shuttle moments, too. Because uh, uh, continue talking about this model. Well, okay. I see that's, well, uh, Ravel made this model many, many moons ago. And like a lot of good models, they stopped making it. Uh, so there are still copies running around out there. And people want the model to look better because Ravel in their estimable fashion decided to use their Gemini astronaut as the figure oh, for really? the model. Yeah. Oh, really? So the spacesuit has nothing to do with the shuttle EMU. The backpack though, the actual man maneuvering unit, they did a pretty good job hmm. because it's not terribly complicated. It's got some unique functional elements to it, but it's not cosmetically or geometrically very complicated the decal looks great because you do have all these little little uh sewing areas exactly and, and little little uh, and doodads that's what we wanted to do is make the visual detail pop 
because otherwise all you've got are flat white surfaces. And that just looks like a desk model. There's yeah, no realism to it. It does. And according to my shuttle scroll here, it's 41B. There we go. Uh, in February uh, 1984, Challengers of Fourth Flight. Yep. And uh, Vance Brand, Brand was, commander. Uh, was the commander. And yep. Boot Gibson's first flight. Absolutely. And Stuart McNair and, and McCandless there. Yeah. Very Great famous eight-day mission to space. There. Yeah. So. so what we did is we not only did the decals, but we figured out a way to improve the visual accuracy of the spacesuit, uh, which also meant breaking the astronauts' legs. <laughs> okay. Because they the were Gemini, straight down. Well, the Gemini figure has his legs coming out like this. Okay. Spread like out. he's, you know, like you remember seeing Ed White. He was kind of out there, uh -huh. spread eagled a little bit with yeah. his jet bottle. So for Gemini, that's fine. But for the shuttle, that's not what they did. They typically tucked their legs back. I never to thought about the that. the center of gravity toward the Cut, MMU. Cutting legs off and for, yeah, that 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 does. Well, it's a lot of putty involved. Let yeah. me tell you. And we also did, you know, the 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 ring that separates the upper torso, the hut, the hard upper torso from uh -huh. the from the pants, to and of course the front control pack has to be built from scratch. Yeah. So. It's this is not for the faint hearted, no, but the decals help because it, it cleans well, up a There's a beautiful lot. looking display. And guess what that's patterned after? That's the that's uh, the the view that brings you to tears, just right. like me. You See, better when believe they it. Raise the curtain and uh, to, right. the, to the and the, the ship are... that or what does it say? I've I used to say that uh, and to, to the ship that's blah blah blah. Welcome home, Atlantis. Yeah, it's earned its place in history. Yeah. Um, Something like that. It's beautiful narrative. That came yeah, from Mission is. Control. I get goosebumps they every time I that. see the opening yeah. of the program before you see the Atlantis yeah. space shuttle and its attack landing mode up there in the yeah, middle of the air. It's just so gorgeous. Uh, Max Faget's old glider that he yeah. used to give people an idea and have her coming in pointed at exactly the same aspect angle yeah. that Atlantis is now sitting at. I think it, I'm going to say it's 37 Pretty degrees. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah you've it's seen it, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's why that model is tipped at 43.21 degrees. Okay, 43.21 out 4321. All right. Four yeah. three two one. That's easy to remember. Yeah. The same reason you guys have a three two one. Well, there's a whole collage there. There you see the McCandless uh, on the left side. Yep. there. it's a little uh, desk model I bought along the way. Yeah. But the two more important birds, of course, are the one seven two Discovery, which is built to look like Discovery did after she shuts down from one thirty three. Now, how'd you get all that uh, patina looking uh, dirtiness to Airbrush, it? my friend. Okay. Airbrush. Right. Very gentle, very soft. Sometimes just your fingers, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, with a photograph on one side of the desk and the airbrush in hand, you just do it a little bit at a time until it looks right. Hmm. And you stop. Yeah, because right. if you keep going, you're going to mess it up. And but, so, so there's such patience involved there. You, you might have a little tumbler there with some ice beside you there. One you, might, yes. And it may have there. other, <laughs> other chemical ingredients in it as well to dull the pain. By the way, my but, tumblers um, from. Thank you, Dave Stangy. Oh, for, there you go. For my new motor Good Michigan city Detroit, right? There, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this also has, does not have the decals. Oh. Originally, Mark, we came up with a different way of doing, the blankets because I hadn't gotten around to doing the decals yet. The decals are now offered as, let's just say, an easier version of that process. Every single one of the blankets on this discovery are little hand-cut sections, yeah, I went German on this, <laughs> of Johnson and Johnson cloth bandage tape. For some god beknownst reason, I looked at this stuff and went, God, that looks exactly like those woven blankets in smaller scale. So I cut a piece out and stuck it on there and went, this might work, you know? And I kept going. I got the tile map out, or the blanket map, I'm sorry. So that's what's so, on the Ohm's pods. Yeah, yeah. same thing. How now, there are decals. What, what kind of glue you use? Well, it's their self, it's, it's bandage or tape. spray? No, it's no, bandage tape. Oh, bandage tape. Hey. adhesive. Oh, yeah, okay. You cut it out to size and you stick it on. Ah. Now, I've got the directions to do this for other modelers as a free downloadable PDF file. Give, give your address again. I should have made a slide okay. of that. But... Address is a piece of cake. One word. LakeCountySpaceport.com. 
one word, no spaces, no hyphens. Okay. Just Lake County Spaceport. Dot com. That's why I probably You'll get couldn't to get it the first time because of the spaces. I was lucky, Cliff. I actually pinched webcom.com on a good day, <laughs> and I was able to get the domain name I wanted. Yeah. The X15, by the way, is in exactly the same scale, 172. Oh, okay. There's what a generation of technology <clears throat> would do for you. Looks like you got an Artemis in the background. And There's maybe an FLS an Delta, in the background. Or, uh, That's one of, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, AXM uh, paper models. Okay. Mr. Moreo. And I've worked closely with uh, Alfonso Moreo because I've used some of his artwork to do a couple of decals you'll see coming up. And I pay him back for his artwork that we have mm -hmm. borrowed every time we sell a set of decals. Now there's gets a percentage display there. Yeah, and that's going to happen. Maybe not with the MLP, maybe not with the crawler, but the stack is back, baby. That's what you're going to see at the California Science Center with right. Endeavor. Oh, yeah. You know, I can't wait. To you see better that. believe it, Cliff. I'm, I'm up. I'm revving for this thing. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's uh, never before has fast. the general public been able to get that close to a stacked yeah. orbiter. Yeah. You know, this yeah. harkens back to 1985. Now, what scale is that? 72. One one four four. Oh, if it was okay. one seven two, it would populate my basement. Well, uh, no, the Endeavor you saw was figures you might have pretty big house. Yeah, well, no, nah, no, nah, not that big. <laughs> yeah. As far as my wife is concerned, she lives in a miniature National Air and Space Museum. <laughs> uh, but I built this originally because we saw STS one. Uh huh. And I added things along the way, like the covers for the wings that, you know, drape over, protect the wing edges when the RSS is around the orbiter. And I shortened the discharge tubes on the uh, That's impressive, that isn't it, Marty, all the detail there. That's balsa wood, paper, and plastic. Hmm. Damn, that must have taken a long time. It did. It well, let's did. get into the new one of those generation. That after you've seen your very first shuttle launch, it was the very first shuttle launch, period. It had to happen, you know, it just had to happen. Now, these are the artworks that I borrowed from Mr. Moreo at AXM. Uh, these, this is a nose cone that Boyce Aerospace sells for the Falcon 9 flying models that SpaceX used to sell. They don't any longer. They were a weird scale, 186. Mm. But I think it's because of the shape and size of the body tube. They chose that scale because it, it worked. So now Boyce does these 3D printed nose cones, and they've got nice surface detail, but that's it. You got to paint everything on by hand, or you buy our marking decals. We provide all the little thrusters, the hatches, all the logos. The only thing you got to bring to the party is the red stripe across the discharge nose cone. That I did with striping tape. You know, our decals don't include that. Mm -hmm. okay. But all the other markings we offer as part of our marking kit. Now, this is the same idea from Boyce in Dragon 2. The first one was the original Dragon they used for cargo, and this is now the Crew Dragon, which is also being used for cargo now, but it's the one that they have crews going up and down in. And you can see we've added a lot more to it. We've got the solar panels on the correct side, the thrusters, the Dracos are there, super Dracos. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's correct. Mostly because it was it was done right after Demo 2. And now, of course, they cover up the Super Dracos completely. You can't see them during launch. Oh, really? Yeah, they're completely enclosed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, lessons learned for SpaceX, too. Uh, I think I'll never forget that. when they blew up on the well, coast here. And, well, and there was that little that, mishap, that was, yeah. Because yeah, that we... That was uh, not good. Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> photographer Craig Bailey was on the <laughs> beach and saw the or the, the reddish blue. cloud. Oh yeah, and, from and, the hypergolf. Uh, I mean, that yeah. thing just it, it blew it apart completely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was amazing. But well, that was the same. They fixed that problem, and uh, you've actually launched twelve human space flights so far. Absolutely, it's done uh, pretty well. But we, that's uh, another product that we offer, and uh, there's the last one I included. Suborbital. Well, yeah, this is the uh, the first passenger run of Spaceship Two. Looks pretty. Yeah, and I we offer those livery decals now. Okay. The modeler has to do 
the silver paint livery decals. That's well, that's Formula the One yeah, sports exactly. ter- car it's, term. It's, it's I like thing. that. Yeah. They use it for rockets. Yeah. I mean, if you got the manufacturer's name and you remember the Delta yeah, logo, they yeah. call that the livery. You yeah. know, and that's that's identifying the rocket. And uh, Branson does the same thing on his birds. Beautiful. That's a beautiful. What scale is that? One one four four. Okay. And the next picture I'll show it. I think with with uh, Eve's. Okay. The mothership. The mothership there. And this is a Revell model. It's a very nice model intrinsically. <clears throat> it just needed a little help to keep it uh, up to date, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Good photography there. Thank you, sir. Uh, Steve, uh, thank you very much. Uh, what else would you like people to know about your well, Lake County spaceport? Now, you know, when we teasingly say, you oh, know, uh, there's a spaceport up there on the shores of Lake too. Erie. Yeah. Uh, this is what we're water talking and about. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> Uh, Gary Gerald's watching up there in uh, Collins, Georgia. Uh, but it's warm weather up there, Gary. We're going to have 90s down here this week. Yeah. Uh, Doug Forrest is just a, a few blocks away from that endeavor from going endeavor. up there to yeah. Los Angeles uh, uh, um, Science Center, Science Center yeah. California Science Center. Mark Usiak's watching. Jamie Orange. Robert Law up in Dundee, Scotland. I was thinking about Marty how Bill Whiting was probably jealous of what a great weekend we had. Oh, yeah, he Hi to you, uh, Bill. Sorry that we had such a fun time. And yeah. sorry that you didn't meet this wonderful gentleman here, but you will <laughs> next time. Absolutely. Bill's we'll a be great for, volunteer we'll now and more. a passionate yeah. uh, supporter of our museum. Uh, Tommy Usiak, glad that you got home, brother. And Dave Stangy said he and his wife, Julie, just got home. And that's a good way to to show this picture of Dave Stangy and his wife, Julie. They're talking to you at our <coughs> wonderful VIP presenter event and yep. that was topped off with a, a Falcon 9 <coughs> rocket launch. That, superb. That Just superb. Was brilliant. That was a highlight. That was, that was... Cliff, why don't you come over here on the Yeah, come here. on, Cliffy. In there, get you in the crowd here. But uh, seriously, Dave Stangy, we appreciate you finding us early. Uh, Marty and I have done about 1,000 and in uh, 30 Thanks, episodes Marty. there and uh let's get cliffy in here and your wife julie delightful to meet you all and glad that you had a picture perfect vacation topped off with some of your love with your fellow space geeks out there so it's been fantastic uh, uh, we did have a great time and yep. i know they can't wait to come back for more and again <clears throat> here are uh two solid financial supporters uh, uh, there in the picture, and two here is as Cliffy's been known to drop a dime on us every once in a while. Try to uh, from Australia, <laughs> to. Cliff Watson. For those of you who don't know, has joined us from Pomona, Australia, where it's uh, the sun is uh, getting low on the horizon, and it's becoming uh, you're into your fall season there as yeah. we're getting into our hot we're, spring we're, season. We're Cliff. coming into our winter, and you're coming into your summer. Yeah. So it's uh. Yeah. Well, how's your trip been well, here? I know you've been in the states with the eclipse and all. We had a nice program with you. Yes. Over a hundred people have watched your program so far. I think I was 140. I said, Marty. I'm which surprised. is which is I'm good really well, you surprised. got friends around the world and yes and uh, I do, we man. appreciate you so uh, uh what did you learn about this guy when you i met? always plug this show because yeah. it's it, this what you guys do is history and and it should never be forgotten exactly because basically even elon musk doing things and all that and it's it's fantastic all the guys that are, most of these guys i met like shuttle workers and they they did hard yards they gave now that hard work's been done. Now they know how it's to do it easier. So it's always a, the first bit's the hardest step. Now it's getting so easy. Like the rockets that Elon Musk's launching now. Like mm-hmm. how many a year? Well, they're making, a year now? Let's correct they're making it that. look easy. They're making it look easy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it'll never be easy. Yeah, it's just like we talked to Bob Cabana, the difference between his first and fourth flight was he a little laid back and on the fourth the, the versus being the nervous rookie on the first. And he said, no, you just, you're just prepared. You, yeah. you don't, you don't, you're, there's no fear, but you're prepared in there. So yeah, but, yeah, thank you, true. Cliff. Uh, what do you think about meeting Steve here? And having, I uh, finally, here? yeah, meeting, meeting all these people, like the, they've been on the show and now I've, I've just about met everybody. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Dave Stangy. He met Terry uh, White. Yes, yeah. Terry White. Yeah. Um, Mr. Handlebars there. Um, uh, he he the was gem. he's 
fantastic. He's a that one. Yep. But uh, there's Chris there yeah, with the beautiful artwork. He, he, but what an artist. He, and yeah, he's a great guy. He, he's, he's the real deal. Uh, he, he uh, he's like is. Eddie and Eddie Van Halen. Uh, the only job they ever had was, you know, uh, picking up a guitar and playing, playing. the two Van Halen brothers. Never yes. never drew a check anywhere else. And yes. same I'm, way with him. His dad said, I'm you're tight. not going to yep. get a summer job. I want you to sit over there and draw me a cat playing with a ball of yarn or something oh, like that. Literally learning at the knee of the master. I'm, ta yeah. I'm taking some of his artwork home. Good. Yes, yeah, yeah, so I, I couldn't resist it. I, I had to get uh, and, uh, some of his uh, artwork. Uh, how about you, uh, Steve, meeting this Aussie uh Oh uh, man, you know, the... I've I've said it before and I will say it again. This weekend I have met so many good friends I've never met because I feel like I know you guys. I've heard mm -hmm. your name, I know where yeah, you're, you're from. Right, really. This the Stay Curious community is a remarkable thing. Thank you. And this mm. is exactly why this museum needs the support that mm. it can get. Yeah. No matter how small, no matter how frequent, do it. Make it part of your philosophy in space history maintenance inspiration education and preservation those are three words i think yeah. on your masthead it couldn't be better because that's okay. exactly what it does and we are not a legal nonprofit, and your donations are tax deductible here on american tax day april 15th there you uh, go uh, i donated a couple of things i found up at a collector's shop just just before you did just, and he uh, fixed the tailgate of my jeep so god you go. bless you cliff he finally <laughs> that'll go down well. Man, it was a very simple thing too of course that i've been suffering with uh, not having the tailgate of my jeep and work you right, but... you have a, a a what is it a sports car you have? Oh, you mean the? Th oh boy, I don't know if I want to discuss this on a podcast. Hey, what, yeah, what people you... get the wrong impression yeah. when they know you own a, a moderately well, expensive car. Yeah. What, 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 He's what, a we'll car talk guy. afterwards. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I I have a Corvette myself. So oh well, okay. I've got a I've got my own space shuttle at home. There believe it go. or not. So, and Cliff, um, we talked to him last week, so go back and reprise that program on YouTube, <laughs> where we have over 600 episodes yes, of Stay Curious, definitely. of the over 1,000 that Marty and I have done. We're into our fourth year, and it's all because of you and great people like this supporting us. So, guys, we're going to yep. go out on this. I don't think I've given you a Rocket Hobo patch. I, maybe you have there. I'll and, cherish uh, this. We've got the That's Rocket fantastic. Hobo patch there. Yes. Thank, thank you, Stangies, for my motor city uh drink there uh, anyone gives me a gift i i use it i'm i'm a uh you give me something i'll, I'll use it up so i'm going to enjoy i grew up uh about 90 miles south of detroit there you uh, go. <clears throat> i went there on a senior trip one time uh, uh see uh uh of course the detroit tigers play what else is going sure, on in yeah. detroit actually i built um a 174 a, yeah, scaled shuttle. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, thirty plus years ago. Sure. And uh, I've still got it. I, and I, I painted it up, detailed it exactly, even down to like one brush hair to put little dots on the dash and like oh, yeah. give it the colours. Oh, in do the, you do interior thing. dashes, decals? For I'm that? glad you asked. Yeah, <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> the space shuttle. Uh, what do we call it? It's called the detail application set, mm -hmm. and it does have all the cockpit displays. It has uh, a few other tidbits, including markings for the uh, multi-purpose logistics module, a bunch of stuff that you just can't get anyplace else. Okay. And again, all this stuff occurred because I wanted it for my own models. Mm -hmm. I made it to put on my work, and I thought if it works well for me, and I like the results, chances are somebody else is going mm -hmm. to feel the same way. Well, a lot now, of cottage industries I'm, are created I'm, I'm like that. I'm going to have to look at from, your, from, uh, I from hope you do. your site. No, because we now you've got those, uh, a lot. Those, those pads for the, the arms. I yeah. probably might get some of those to make it more, look well, more realistic. Well, Cliffy, set. you're going to get those at lakecountyspaceport.com, yep. yes. where Steve Jokums will take care of you when he gets back yes, from his will. vacation. I'm, I'm going to get a discount on I might. <laughs> I'll do what I can, because international shipping is a bitch. Oh, yeah, you know, no, it's not cheap. 
I yeah. That. So yeah, we do we we try to favor our international customers maybe a little more than our domestic because domestic postage is pretty cheap. Yeah. It, no it, international. It, we found that with our oh auctions God. and stuff like that. They yeah, have it, tariffs it's, on top it's, of tariffs it's, and stuff like that. It's going through the roof. Yeah. Well, I'm giving you this rock and hobo patch here, and we got a couple other things for you when you leave. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh my uh, goodness, Steve. Great to make your friendship here, uh, and so happy that you could sit in our studio here. Been a joy. Great. Stay with you, Cliffy. Yes, Mike. Uh, God bless both of you and all you stand for, and happy yes. trails. Yeah. And uh, Ad Astra Performia. Yeah. Performia. Performa. Yeah, performa, which is to space through modeling. That's to the stars through modeling. To the stars. Yeah, that's your logo. Ad Astra ah. Performia. That's our tagline on our website. Yeah, yeah. I've murdered it, but that's it. But <laughs> that's not you guys help me with my tagline as we yeah. help Marty say goodbye to Marty Winkle there. Is there Thank you, Marty. To, button up on our stay curious podcast today don't forget to have a look at my pomona astronomy club site as well all right so, on yeah, facebook pomona facebook. astronomy club in australia it's a good one there excellent and lakecountyspaceport.com is where you can get this decals to make this beautiful model behind you so guys thank you very I'll much be the space shuttle i'll be excellent. back tomorrow again my friends as i'm mark marquette saying with my friends here we'll see you to again to bridge the, the space between us, between us.